In this video I would like to talk a little bit about curses. So a curse is basically something which is happening to you or which you're doing against your own will. Um, people tend to think that curses are in a way something very outside of themselves. So something is making me unhealthy or something is making me have bad luck or fights with people. But uh, actually the reality is that the curse is making you do it to yourself. And that's a very important uh, distinction because also it gives you a kind of a power over the curse. So some people can in a way naturally uh, learn to compensate for that curse by uh, stopping to uh, feed it or to empower these negative parts of themselves. <clears throat> so in a way you can compare um, a curse a little bit with the pacemaker. So it's an artificial object which is implanted in the body and which then enforces a certain rhythm or a certain action upon the body. And in the case of the pacemaker in the way it makes sure that the heart beats regularly but in case of a curse it yeah, can create other problems. So the first thing to distinguish is what is and what isn't a curse. So many people think they're cursed because whenever they're with somebody they feel drained or they get irritated or angry or um, upset or depressed. And this is not a curse. This is in a way just the other person's energy body or the other person's uh, uh, spirits affecting you. Because en energy naturally flows from high to low. So if I come somewhere with a very high energy, lots of high vibration energy, and the other person is very depressed, has a very low amount of energy, my energy is going to flow to the other person. It's just a natural law, just like gravity, water flows from high to low. Same with energies. And when I leave that person, I'll be feeling yeah, a little bit run down, and the other person will feel strengthened by having had me around. So it's a kind of a vampirism which some people are employing and people can also employ it actively. So if I want to steal energy from somebody else I can in a way make my own energy lower and less by storing it into uh, uh, my storage places, typically the womb and the shoulders or the breasts. So by, in a way, pulling my own energy inward, I create kind of a vacuum which sucks other energies into my body. This is not the most healthy thing to do, because yes, I will have more energy by taking it from the others, but I, I cannot control that energy very well, so it will tend to stagnate my own growth processes. So yes, I get more power, but I get less growth and less transformation. And this often leads to a vicious cycle because I cannot adapt, I cannot grow. I will constantly need other people's energy to maintain myself. And then you have a, a constant energetic vampirism going on because I've never yeah, chosen the path of self-transformation of growth. But such a thing is not a curse. Um, then there is the influence of the spirits. So it may be that uh, my spirits want something from your spirit and they will try to make it happen that way. So for instance, maybe they yeah, want me to learn how to be angry, to use my anger. And yeah, then these other spirits will yeah, create conflicts, create problems uh, to create learning opportunities for me. Or maybe I have a certain energy which the other person wants and they may um, create a kind of a seduction or an attraction so I will open up energetically and make my energy available uh, to the other person. Um, so yes, these are things which are happening against your will, but they are not curses. A curse is something which is with you permanently. Um, so it doesn't matter where you are, where you go, it is yeah, part of you. It doesn't matter who you're with. 
and there's roughly two types of curses. There are curses which are in a way acting continuously and, are acting, and there are curses which are conditional. Um, most curses are conditional curses, so they have a triggering condition or several triggering conditions. So if the person gets too powerful, for instance, or too rich or feels happy or whatever, something will happen to disturb that. The person will again lose their power, lose their money, lose their happiness, um, lose their relationship, for instance. Um, so these are typically conditional curses, which in may create a ceiling, like you cannot be more happy than this or more rich than that or have a relationship which, yeah, yeah, goes beyond a certain level um, because then the curse will trigger. Um, so this is of course a very frustrating thing and what many people do is they just accept it like okay it is not meant for me and they will yeah, live their life with that limitation. Uh, other people are a little bit more forceful and they recognize that the limitation is unnatural because they used to be able to have things on a higher level and now they cannot anymore and they will try to regain their old uh, level and they will start struggling with the curse. And this is in a way a very important step to recognize that it is indeed something unnatural and to activate your own immune system to try to push it out. And I would have to say in like 70 or 80% of the time that is enough. If the person just becomes aware that there is a problem and they start resisting it and they start pushing in the other direction, then they naturally create enough force to compensate for the curse or to push out the curse and they will, um, yeah, just by activating their immune system, get rid of it. In some cases this won't work, but also in timeline, if you're talking about getting rid of a curse, it is not immediately, like sometimes it takes weeks, sometimes months, but more often it will take a few years for a person to push out a curse in, the, in a natural fashion. Um, one of the easiest ways in which a person's own immune system can uh, yeah, block the curse is to stop feeding it. Because a curse needs energy to work and it uses the energy usually which you are providing to it through your energy body, through your aura. So by, in a way, just like a, a tumor, if you cut off the blood flow the tumor will shrink. Um, in the same way you can also make the curse shrink and ultimately shrivel up and disappear by stopping uh, the energy flow to the curse. Uh, there are possibilities that also the curse will draw energy from a spirit or from the person who cast the curse, but they are not very common. The other way you can naturally disarm the curse is by disarming its feelers. Um, because uh, most curses have triggering conditions, like I said, and they're looking into your aura to see if you're happy, if you're rich, if you're uh, with someone. And uh, these feelers are also energetic structures, like an antenna picking up a signal from one part of the aura and relaying that signal back to the curse. And those feelers can be pruned, so you can cut off the sensitivity of the curse, so the curse would still do the same thing, but it doesn't notice anymore that um, yeah, you are happy or wealthy or powerful or uh, in love or whatever the condition may be. So these are very natural ways in which people can uh, yeah, cure themselves from a curse. Um, the more constant curses are a lot easier to detect because these conditional curses we tend to look at um, um, yeah, outside events like okay everything was going well until this happened or that happened and we tend to think of it as co coincidence but if coincidence happens yeah once of course it's coincidence twice it's probably still coincidence but if it happens in pretty much the same pattern three four five times 
then it's possible that there's actually a script which is making things happen according to that script so then you should start thinking like oh maybe it is a curse which is creating this script scripted pattern of how things go uh, so this makes uh, finding a conditional curse um, possible an unconditional curse they tend to have a very sudden onset after which things will just yeah, be that way so a person may be cursed to uh, stay with somebody or to fall in love with someone and often it is just turned on and doesn't turn off and people will notice like oh suddenly it is like this and it never changes no matter what happens um, so they're a lot easier to detect these uh, constant curses So how does cursing work? Because um, how do you get such a pattern? And there are a few ways it can happen. Uh, one way is that this pattern is carried into your energy body by a spirit. The spirit will just look for weak spots in the aura, will work itself in and leave the curse behind and then leave again. So this is a very common way that people have spirit allies, which in a way implant curses. Uh, in their victims. Uh, another way which, uh, in, in which it can be done, and this is much more difficult to detect because as I said in my previous video, if a spirit breaks into an aura there's usually a trace. You can see where it broke in and where it went in the aura. Um, but uh, a curse can also be put in, for instance, something to drink, something to eat, uh, a piece of jewelry, um, and or transferred via touch so for instance I can curse a person by shaking their hand or giving them a ring or preparing some food for them and or pouring a drink for them and this way it, you bypass the natural resistance of the aura and implant it directly into the physical body um, this is not as common because you need to get close to that person to do that or to give them that cursed object and often the people who are cursing somebody or having somebody cursed um, yeah they don't have a very friendly relationship so it would be very weird to give that person a hug or a ring or something to eat so this is why you tend to see the pattern of curses in the aura more than curses directly into the uh, into the physical part of the energy body but it is also possible um, it's also possible to in a way make a curse manifest itself by transforming the person's energy body and this can be done for instance by mantras or by uh, symbol magic or by chaos magic where you in a way create a transformation within the person so that the person will in a way curse themselves uh, the most common way, but these tend to be also very short-lived curses, is basically if the person has a very strong negative intention, uh, strong enough to overcome the other person's resistance. So um, everybody gets angry at other persons a little bit, like if somebody takes your parking spot or cuts you off on the highway, of course you're like, ah, you asshole. But yeah, this anger uh, or frustration is not enough to curse somebody. But if a person, in a way, has enough power in their energy body, they have a naturally powerful energy body and enough focus, so they commit enough of the energy body towards harming the other person, that negative energy can sometimes overcome the other person's natural defense, their aura, and implant itself, embed itself into the other person. Uh, these curses are not feeding upon the other uh, person's energy, but rather upon the initial release of energy of the person who was sending the curse. So these cur types of curses tend to burn themselves out within a few weeks to a few months. Um, so if indeed I would be upset at somebody for something they did and I would get exceedingly angry and this anger would, um, yeah, uh, like I hope he yeah something nasty happens to that person then that pattern will in a way yeah continue working within that person 
but it is not as powerful as if I would use their own energy body to do it. So you could say that um, you put a secondary magnet in the energy body. Um, that's how a curse works. It, is, it uses the energy body of the person. So if I am cursed, for instance, to um, uh, that my relationship would break up, then like if uh, a person would make that type of connection, then my aura would block it. Or I would not attract such a person because my aura is not allowed to radiate such an energy. But if there is an emotional curse in a way also there, then it creates an, an opposite pattern. So I may want to attract the person while this uh, curse is trying to push the person away and ultimately the strongest force will win. So these emotional curses, they're more of a tug of war rather than really corrupting your own uh, energy body. So, um, we talked a little bit about these emotional curses, which are just a blob of usually very emotional energy of another person which is hanging around in your own yeah, energy body. Um, and you, but you, more usual it, is it that the other person's um, curse is a very neutral energy or even a copy of your own energy. It's also possible to steal a bit of my own energy, reforge it into a curse and then allow it to come back. So this is often how black magicians will work. They will try to get a hair, a fingernail, um, uh, clothes, whatever holds my energy. So they can reshape that little bit of my energy into a curse, which is kind of like a virus program or a Trojan horse, which is then allowed to re-enter my energy body. Um, as I said before in the video, you can usually see it because it doesn't respond. Um, like the rest of the energy body does. So maybe I should do a little um, demonstration of that. So now my, in a way, my aura is moving together with, uh, with my own spirit. But if I take a very neutral lump of energy, so which I can just pull out of the astral. And now I'm not shaping it into a curse. This is just a bit of neutral energy. And I place that within the aura. And the aura will naturally try to yeah, push out foreign energies. So it will need an anchor or a way to, to stay here. Um, so typically what a curse does, uh, it's is mimicked or there is a layer around it of my own energy or of a pleasant energy which I will want to attract. So in this case I will create a little layer of tree energy. I like trees so yeah if there's energy of a tree around I want to kick it out. So now this yeah, piece of energy which doesn't belong here will tend to stay here because my immune system doesn't recognize it. So you can probably sense that there's now this blob of energy. And if my own energy changes, this blob won't change with it. So if I become a little bit more sad and my energy goes lower, that energy stays constant. Same if I become, yeah, my energy becomes higher, my energy becomes more powerful. I, you can notice that there is this energy which doesn't change along with the rest of the aura. And this is typically how you find curses. So I'll take this one away again. And removing a curse is um, much more of a tricky thing than you would imagine. Um, and the reason for that is that curses tend to usually have booby traps. Um, so the most typical thing is for a curse to duplicate itself. So if another person touches it, then that same type of curse will also afflict the person touching it. So if it is in a way a curse blocking my power, another yeah, energetic healer tries to remove it and as soon as he makes contact with it, that curse will in a way 
create a copy of itself blocking the power of the healer. So it is a very dangerous thing to try to uh, to deal with curses because yeah the same thing which is happening to your client can happen to you and quite often does. Um, another very common defense is that it triggers an alarm bell. Um, so that uh, often when a person is using a spirit to implant a curse that spirit will hang around there and report if something happens to the curse so that the black magician who planted the curse will be alarmed that there's somebody trying to help their victim so that the black magician can act and either re-implant the curse after the healer is done or actually attack the healer to prevent them from uh, helping the, their victim. Another very common uh, uh, trap is that the person's uh, energy body will start to attack the person trying to heal them. Um, so often this is very confusing also for the healer because a person comes to you with a problem, you start healing them, you detect there's a curse and then they in a way say like, oh no, this doesn't feel right, I want to end the session here, I'm going back home. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, what are you going to do? <laughs> um, this is a very mild version and sometimes they actually don't just avoid the healer, but they actually become angry or aggressive or abusive to the person trying to, uh, to heal them. So this is also a way in which a curse can uh, protect itself. Um, some curses have a cloaking mechanism, they can move around, so they will um, yeah, change uh, uh, their energy or create spores in a way they in a way seed themselves so that if the curse is removed, that out of the life energy the seed will grow into a new curse so that a few weeks or months later the person will be cursed again. So yeah i could go on and on because there is such a huge variety in, in curses and yeah how people are cursing each other um, the main thing is that you really really want to be safe if you consider that the person might be cursed so the best thing to do is to try to um, protect yourself so first Step one is to make sure is there a watcher spirit or another spirit which is going to call um, whoever attacked uh, your, your client. If so, well then you need to make sure that that spirit doesn't do so either by capturing the spirit, bribing it, uh, blocking it, uh, fooling it, um, find some way that it, that doesn't happen. When you're trying to remove the curse, you can do several things. You could, for instance, create an energetic double so that the curse, if it does strike uh, or tries to strike the person trying, uh, trying to remove it, that it will hit your astral double and go into the astral double's body instead of your own energy body. Um, there's also ways to ground yourself, for instance, so that the curse will go to the ground. It doesn't always work, but it is at least some form of protection. Um, typically, you could also use uh, a glamour, so an illusion, basically an illusionary energy body, to do the work for you. So it's similar to creating an astral double, but yeah, also it's one which looks very different from you. So that if there is indeed a trigger or a signal going back to the person who cast it, then yeah, it won't immediately lead back to you. Or if the person knows glamours, they might still be able to detect your energy, but it at least provides some form of protection. Also, if you're working with your hands, try to really coat your hands in other energies, not with your own energy. So attract energy from the earth or from the sun or some other source so that you in a way create insulating mittens before you work on, um, on such things. You may also ask one of your spirit guides or power animals to do it for you. This is often also a very good way to uh, remove curses. Um, you can also work with air elementals asking them to remove the curse from the aura. 
to protect yourself because most curses they will strike another human but they tend not to harm uh, spirits or elementals uh, because they're not recognized as something which would typically be a threat to the curse. So I hope that this has given you some background on um, how to work with a person who is cursed.